I have to admit, I don't think I've ever seen a situation as unique as the quarterback situation in Philadelphia in my entire years of being an NFL fan. Maybe the only time that I've seen something come even close to this was when the Washington football team gave themselves a quarterback controversy between the quarterback that they gave up three first round picks for in Robert Griffin III and the quarterback that they would draft many rounds later in Kirk Cousins. And even in that situation, I kind of understood it a little bit more than this situation, because at least in the Washington football team situation, you had a quarterback that was injured that clearly didn't fit the scheme and a quarterback that was clearly performing a little bit better than him, even though they elected not to sign him to a long-term deal shortly after that. Nevertheless, you see a lot of very interesting and unique QB situations occur in the NFL. But I don't think there's ever been one that has been so strange in my entire life of watching football. So what's going on, guys? Your boy Mike here. Guys, we're giving away a PlayStation 5 to someone that subscribes and turns on our notifications for this channel. And if you want additional entries, make sure you follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Links to that are in the description down below. Now that we got all that out of the way, break! Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? If you guys looked at Carson Wentz's statistics over the past couple of years, you would understand why I am so fascinated by this situation. Because as I'm going through his career, I'm trying to think of at what point did the Philadelphia Eagles have the idea of drafting a backup quarterback or an additional quarterback in the second round. You see, in the first three rounds of the NFL draft, you typically select a player that's going to be a presumed starter. Even if the Philadelphia Eagles were thinking, and this is what I thought at the time that the Eagles drafted Jalen Hurts, they were drafting an insurance policy in the event that Carson Wentz went down, you wouldn't typically do that up until the fourth or fifth round. A player that is more likely to fit that mold of QB would probably be a quarterback like Jake Fromm, if anything. And if you look at what the Buffalo Bills did, they did exactly that. They selected their franchise backup quarterback in the fifth round. The moment Jake Fromm was selected, you knew that there was no chance that he was going to take Josh Allen's place as the starting QB. But Jalen Hurts was a player that you could potentially build your team around, and he was selected in the second round when the Philadelphia Eagles had multiple holes that they needed to still fill, including holes on the offensive side of the ball. And I'm not faulting the Philadelphia Eagles for doing this. I'm more enamored by the fact that they had the foresight to do it. Because if you look at Carson Wentz's career, his best year in his entire career was when he played 11 games in 2018, completed almost 70% of his passes, threw 21 touchdowns to seven interceptions, but he didn't play a full season. He missed five games that season. As a matter of fact, that was the last season he really sustained a major injury in the regular season. In the 2019 NFL season, Carson Wentz had another remarkable season. He threw for 4,000 yards for the first time in his career, throwing 20 seven touchdowns to seven interceptions but the only moment that I could look throughout Carson Wentz's career that may have given Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie and I don't know maybe Doug Peterson the idea to draft Jalen Hurts in his only game in the postseason his postseason debut when he was in a wild card game against the Seattle Seahawks Carson Wentz sustained a concussion after Jadavian Clowney made a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit on him. And I guess at that point, the Philadelphia Eagles said, okay, it would be nice if we had a player that could come in and fill in Carson's role in the event that this happens in another critical situation, just like we did when we had Nick Foles on the roster. When Carson Wentz was able to perform extremely well in the 2017 NFL season, which is by far one of his best years of his entire career, he was practically the favorite to win the MVP that season. Season, but they had Nick Foles that came in and was able to do enough of the dirty work to get the Philadelphia Eagles into the Super Bowl and defeat the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl as well. And the interesting thing here is it's very hard to look at a player and say, hey, there's a high chance this player is going to sustain an injury because if you look at Carson Wentz's injury history, 
he hasn't really sustained the same type of injury over and over again. In 2017, he suffered a torn ACL. In 2018, he had a back injury. And in 2019, in his postseason debut, he was dealing with a concussion. All of those injuries are separate injuries. If he had a back injury that was consistently hampering him or an injury that consistently came up, well, I'd understand having a backup of the caliber of Jalen Hurts, but it was very impressive to see that the Eagles had the foresight to make this move. Drafting a quarterback in the second round literally a year after giving Carson Wentz a huge contract extension after the year that he did sustain an injury in the playoffs is a very intriguing decision with some consequences. You see, drafting Jalen Hurts may have been the right decision, but ultimately, that came at the detriment of Carson Wentz. You see, quarterbacks aren't robots. A lot of their game is based off of their confidence, especially a player like Carson Wentz that typically makes risky throws and risky decisions. And we saw that all come crashing down this year when Carson Wentz threw 15 interceptions, which is the most of his career, in just 12 games played. He threw for 2,620 yards and 16 touchdowns as well, and a career-low 57% completion percentage. Now look, there are external factors. His mechanics are a little messed up. His supporting cast isn't really all there. You could also blame the fact that Frank Reich isn't there, but dude, Frank Reich wasn't there the past two years also, so I don't really want to blame that fully. And then Jalen Hurts comes in, and now you're in this very fascinating situation where Carson Wentz has officially come out and said words that I wouldn't really expect him to say, but I felt like was pretty much hinted to. And honestly, I don't really know how I feel about him saying this currently because it's obvious and I don't even think it needs to be said because the Philadelphia Eagles went out and gave this man a contract extension in the 2019 NFL season. It was clear that he was supposed to be their franchise cornerstone. This all builds up to the point that we're at today. You see, Carson Wentz came out and said that he is going to demand a trade this offseason if Jalen Hurts is the new starter of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now look, I don't think you need to be a genius to figure that out. This is according to Adam Schefter, by the way. If a team is paying you $128 million over four years with over $100 million guaranteed, which was signed after the 2018 NFL season, this is prior to the concussion he received, which in my opinion is what pretty much shifted the thinking in Howie Roseman's head in terms of drafting Jalen Hurts. Chances are they don't want you sitting on the bench. That's a huge chunk of cap space that you're giving to a man to just sit on your bench, especially because if you are a football team that is playing well under a quarterback that's under a rookie scale contract, you want to make the most of that time and the most of that money and invest it in other areas. The, uh, the best example I could give you is what the Los Angeles Rams did prior to overpaying, in my opinion, overpaying Jared Goff. You see, during that time, since they were paying Jared Goff rookie money, they decided, okay, we're going to extend Todd Gurley. We're going to bring in Aqib Tlaib. We're going to bring in Marcus Peters. We're going to pay Nadama Kungsu. We're going to bring in as many pieces as we possibly could in order to make this push for a Super Bowl because eventually we're going to have to give our franchise QB a ton of money. And that's what's probably going to happen here with Jalen Hurts if the Eagles decide to move in that direction. If you ask me, if I'm the Philadelphia Eagles, if I even see the slightest chance that Jalen Hurts might be the better long-term option, I'll opt for him just because of the financial flexibility I'll receive from having a quarterback that's being paid second round QB money. Especially in the current state that the Eagles are in now, they need to invest that money in as many additional areas as they could because this team needs a lot of work and a lot of help in order to get back into contention. So should the Philadelphia Eagles trade Carson Wentz? Absolutely, especially because I feel like there's gonna be a bunch of teams that will be willing to pay a first round price in order to get a quarterback that is still just 27 years old and has performed fairly well throughout his entire career, especially if you're the Indianapolis Colts who has a head coach that used to be Carson Wentz's offensive coordinator. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think the Philadelphia Eagles should do? Aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.